Welcome to my musings on the meaning of multiplication and division in context by me, Gwen Fisher, pencasted with Doceri Software. So multiplication describes repeated groups or repeated sets. So for example, five sets of three buttons can be drawn like this. By using multiplication, we can find that five times three is equal to 15. 15 tells us the total number of buttons in the five sets. So there are 15 buttons all together. Let's do a related but different example, three sets of five buttons. We can draw a picture that looks like this, and here we see that three times five equals 15. And we can notice that in both of these cases, we get the same result. But these drawings don't really make it very obvious why 5 times 3 should be equal to 3 times 5. I mean, it's easy enough to check when the numbers are small like this, but if we were using huge numbers, it might not be so obvious. So let's redraw the pictures. So in the first case, I'm going to draw my sets of three objects where the threes are going into rows. So I have five rows of three dots or three buttons. And in the second case, I'm going to draw them vertically like this. And so here I'm going to get three columns of five dots. And in this representation, it's a lot more obvious why five times three should be equal to three times five because I've arranged the dots into the same configuration or what's called a rectangular array in both cases. So let's do a unit analysis where we look at the units in these multiplication equations. So in the first case, we have five sets times three buttons equals 15 set buttons. Now, set buttons, that's a unit that really bothers me. Um, really, I want 15 buttons on the right. But on the left, then I have set buttons. And on the right, I have buttons. So I have to fix something on the left. So the problem is with the three. It's really three buttons per set, which I can write as buttons over sets. And then in the second case, I have three sets times five buttons per set is equal to 15 buttons. And so you can see that in terms of the units, what I've done in these two problems is I've switched the sets and the buttons per set on the left side of the equation. And other examples of units that we might use for multiplication problems include things like seconds times meters per second equals meters. So this is the classic velocity and distance equation. Hours times dollars per hour equals dollars. This is useful when we're talking about working a job and how much money you make. And then cars times people per car is equal to people. This might be useful if we're taking a bunch of children on a field trip and we want to know how many cars we need in total. Now let's look at division. Division is the undoing of multiplication. So mathematicians, every time we do something, we want to look at how we can undo it. So in the case of multiplication, the undoing of it is division. So let's look at our particular example here of 3 times 5 equals 15. One way that we can undo this is to take 15 and divide it by 3, and that will be equal to 5. And then the other one is 15 divided by 5 equals 3. And if we put units back into these equations, we can get a better understanding of how we can think about these two equations on the right, how we can think about them differently, how they might be different from each other. So what does this mean? In the context of buttons and sets of buttons. If we take three sets and we multiply by five buttons per set, we get 15 buttons. And if we strip off the numbers, we get this simple um, unit equation, this unit analysis equation. I can switch it around to find the two division problems. So the first one would give me buttons divided by sets is equal to buttons per set. And if you're familiar with this notation, this might seem pretty obvious. It's almost just a, um, a change of notation from the left side of the equation to the right side. And the second one is buttons divided by buttons per set is equal to sets. And this one is perhaps a little less obvious. But if you're familiar with the division of fractions algorithm where you invert and multiply, you should be able to convince yourself that this makes sense. 
Now in the first case, if I put the numbers back in, I get 15 buttons divided by three sets equals five buttons per set. And if I want to draw a picture, I can deal the 15 buttons evenly into three sets. So I establish my three sets first and I just deal them out like they were cards. And the question I'm asking in this case is how many buttons are in each set? And I can just count them and see that there are five. This kind of division is called dealing division. In the second case, I can look at 15 buttons divided by five buttons per set and get three sets. And here if I want to draw a picture, I'm going to measure five buttons into each set in the same way I might measure cups of flour into a bowl. So the first set has five buttons, the second set has five buttons, every set has five buttons, and the question I'm asking is how many sets are there? And I can count that there are three, and this is called measurement division. Now let's look at this in a slightly different way. If we ask the question, what is 6 divided by 3, we have really two different ways to solve this, depending upon whether the 3 is the number of groups or sets, or 3 is the number of items per group. So in the first case, if we take 6 items and divide by 3 groups, we draw out our 3 groups, and we deal those 6 items amongst the 3 groups until they're all dealt out, and then we see that there are 2 items in each group. So 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2 items per group. And the other way to do this is to take 6 items and divide by 3 items per group. And so here I put 3 items in the first group and 3 items in the second group, and I can see that there are 2 groups. So 6 divided by 3 in this case is 2 groups. This is measurement division, and the first one that I did was the dealing division. And in both cases, the corresponding multiplication equation is 2 times 3 equal to 6, or if you prefer, 3 times 2 equals 6, where 6 is the total number of items. I haven't labeled the 2s and 3s in these equations because they're different in the two different types of division. Now, mathematics is not a spectator sport, so I want to leave you with some problems for personal improvement. The first one is if Sally can run 10 miles in two hours, how fast does Sally run? After you've answered this question, you can decide what type of division is this? Is it a dealing division problem or is it a measurement division problem? And in the second question, Maria wants to buy a coat and the coat costs her $90. If she makes $20 for each hour that she works at her job, how many hours does she have to work? in order to purchase the coat. And again, after you've solved the problem, determine what type of div division is this. Is it dealing or is it measurement? So I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for your attention.